Hi, everyone. It's Thursday, uh, June 10th. Um, hope you had a wonderful Wednesday. It's great to be with you today. We're, we're looking at this uh, theme, uh, th this theme that through all the voices, the voice of peace. And the idea here is that uh, through all the cacophony of voices that tell us we're not enough, uh, all the lies, including ourselves sometimes, the voice of Jesus is greater because what he's done for us is greater through the cross and the empty tomb. Uh, and today we're, we're going to read a, a story from uh, the Gospel of John. I used it this last Sunday. Um, and I just love the connection. I hope you can see this connection, and I hope that uh, God's Spirit uh, will bring it close to your heart today. So here we go from, from John 8. At dawn, Jesus appeared again in the temple courts, where all the people gathered around him, and he sat down to teach them. The teachers of the law and the Pharisees brought in a woman caught in adultery. They made her stand before the group and said to Jesus, Teacher, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. Uh, so imagine uh, the shame here. Huh? And, and more than that, the betrayal. Uh, she was caught in the very act of adultery. It meant the guy was caught too, right? Very act. <laughs> and yet they let him go. So the powers that be, the, the people around her, uh, didn't value her enough to give her a break here. Huh? In fact, they're out to condemn her uh, because why? She's not worth what the guy was. Huh? Uh, and, and so everyone has betrayed her and all the voices are saying, you're not worth it. Uh, and and, and did, did you get this? They, uh, they made her stand before the group and you can all, you know, we love to condemn people. I see it in, in our nation. Uh, we love to have scapegoats that, that one guy or one gal, what they do is the most horrible thing in the world. Uh, and when you look at what everybody else does, it really isn't. But, but man, we love to, to have those one or two or handful of people. Now, they're the bad people, right? Uh, and so here she is, uh, and, and they've got her here. Uh, uh, as I said, they, they, they made her stand before the group and I can hear the cat calls and the anger and people just uh, telling her she's worth nothing, right? Uh, and, and indeed, this is what they say to Jesus. In the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. Now, what do you say? They were using this question as a trap in order to have a basis for accusing him. So, they, first of all, her life, they would... Um, they would look to take her life uh, and they would base it on the law of Moses. But what it really is, they're trying to get Jesus. You see that? So she's really a political pawn here that they're really willing to sacrifice. Oh man, the, the, the voices, the voices that tell her that she doesn't measure up, that she's not enough, that she's uh, uh, disposable. Um, and, and I would think... Um, her voice would accuse herself, right? It's, uh, because that's what happens. We, we tend to believe those voices. Uh, quite a picture here. It says here, But Jesus bent down and started to ride on the ground with his finger. When they kept on questioning him, he straightened up and said to them, If any one of you is without sin, let him be the first to throw a stone at her. Again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. Now, we have no idea what he wrote. If I, I think it was just doodling. I think the message here was, you guys are a bunch of barnyard voices. You're a cacophony that are ha ha you have no wisdom to you. Your voices don't matter because they're lies and they're spiteful. And they're, this woman is created in the image of God, an image bearer, and you're looking to kill her and tear her down and tell her she's not worth anything. I'm going to die for her. She's worth the death on the cross, my death on the cross. And, and so it's like he's not even listening to the voices, you see. They're worth nothing. He's writing there. And finally, he says, those of you who are have no sin, you cast the first stone. And of course, they were convicted. Uh, because if they claimed that, right, they would be under the penalty of death themselves in this culture. I, they, they, they weren't being so altruistic, I don't think. I think rather they, they knew they were had. Huh? by Jesus, uh, and they would condemn themselves in this culture if they said they had no sin, so they just started walking away. It says here, At this those who heard began to go away one at a time, the older ones first, until only Jesus was left. 
with a woman still standing there. Jesus straightened up. So imagine this woman. She, um, I, I would think she still has great self-condemnation, right? She has been uh, brought out and scoffed at by uh, all of society, by the whole world, so to speak. And now she's in front of uh, this, um, this teacher, this rabbi, um, who is Jesus, the Savior of the world. And um, so Jesus straightened up and asked her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? And she said, No one, sir. No one condemned me. Now, why would Jesus ask her this question? So that she could hear the answer herself. No one has condemned you. You see, if the standard is, you have to be beyond condemnation yourself to condemn someone else, no one can condemn you. Uh, those voices are silenced. The storm is just, just, he was on the, on the lake, just like he was on the lake, be quiet, and, they, and the voices are stilled, right? That would tear her down, that would say that she's not worth anything, that would say she's not enough. Uh, and then, and so what's this telling her? That voice in you that's saying that, uh, still it, because my voice is greater. And then uh, he says, then neither do I condemn you. That's the great voice of Jesus. And then go now and leave your life of sin. Go now and live in the resurrection. When we hear these voices, uh, and many of them come from ourselves, that says that say to us, we're not enough, um, that would grind us under the boot of, of this, um, this judgment that would throw us away, or this condemnation. Remember the voice of Jesus. I do not condemn you. No one can speak a word against you. Now go and live. And the reality of the resurrection is who you are. I have called you by name. I have redeemed you. You're mine, right? You are blood-bought, redeemed, empowered child of God. Um, amen. Will you pray with me? Uh, Father, uh, sometimes we're like this woman. Uh, we hear the voices of those around us who would condemn us. Uh, we see our own lives. Um, maybe uh, of years ago, maybe uh, those sins that are we struggle with through all the years, um, whatever it might be that would condemn us, our own voices. Lord, in those places, we pray that your Holy Spirit would blast through those voices with the voice of Jesus. I do not condemn you. And that we might receive that by faith and know his voice is the voice of authority. And we pray that every day we might live in the, in the resurrection of, of being your dear child, of being made brand new in you. Uh, and we pray that we might share this with others who are in that same place of condemnation. Pray in your name. Amen. All right, we'll see you Sunday, God willing. May God be with you. Uh, see, open our eyes, huh? Let's open our eyes to see the folks around us who are just like this woman who need the voice uh, of grace in their lives. May God be with you. Bye-bye.